Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is going to be a short recording and a technique. Kind of a technique, but probably less of a technique than an idea. So this is the idea, okay? The idea about how you see yourself. What you believe to be true. And what you say to yourself. So it's going to be short because I'm just going to go through the basics of what I'm thinking. And I'll leave it to you to decide what you want to do with the idea. It's a lovely sound of a tra- <laughs> a lovely plane going by. So the idea really is this. We become what we think about. It's not my idea, uh, but it's the point of this recording is what we think about affects how we feel. But I want to go deeper than that and talk about our self. You know, what we think about ourselves, what we actually, who you think you are, who you believe that you are, your self image. For example, let's call it self-image. Now, when I was in sales, before I had my first, like, really, really big panic attack, my self-image was someone of fairly confident, very good at what I did, very good at the job, good salesperson, one of the top people there, big fish, you know, I was just, you know, I was, I would say fairly confident from that perspective. And then a month after, a month later, after having a few panic attacks, my self-image was of someone that has panic attacks. That was that was it. That seemed to be all I focused on. And we get what we focus on. Now the argument could say, well, what was I focusing on having a panic attack when I had the first one? No, I wasn't. So You know, I had it for a reason. And at the time, I thought I was dying. I genuinely did. And I was on the phone to a customer in the office where I was working. I hung up on them, ran out of the building, because I didn't want to die in front of my colleagues. Which is weird. Just in my head, even now, I think, well... If you're going to collapse, it's better to collapse in front of people so that you can get help. But logic didn't come into it. All I was thinking is, what if I collapse and start dribbling and the the, the woman that I really fancy sees me on the floor dribbling? That was kind of more on my mentality back then. And... My self-image changed from being this 
successful salesperson within my industry, I was successful to be in I suppose in my head broken I felt broken I felt I was there was uh, I was weak that's how I felt I don't feel that way now I don't and so I'm not I'm using the words of how I felt at that time I felt that I was it was out of my control and I didn't like that And to not be able to, it just felt wrong. To not even be able to control how I felt. Felt. It just seemed wrong to me. It just, there was, it didn't fit with how I perceived myself to be. Bearing in mind, at that time, I'd been studying hypnosis for years. And I was using hypnosis with the sales, with my, you know, to get my uh, motivation up, positivity, all that stuff. And then to feel almost like everything crumbled underneath me. Couldn't figure it out. And I perceived myself very differently. My self-image was... Uh, almost like a washed out person like a uh, a finished which goes to show one thing that I didn't realise at the time that I was pretty much doing exactly the same when I was having the panic attacks as I was doing when I was in sales is I was using that evidence and then generalizing in such a massive way so instead of I'm really good at sales and that's what I used to think about nearly all the time to suddenly I'm full of anxiety and panic. And I was thinking of that all the time. And that's what I got more of. It's all I got for nearly two years. I say it's not all I got. There was plenty of times when I had other things. But I got a lot of it. And... Where I'm coming from with this is what we focus on, we get more of. And it's not because your mind or unconscious mind wants to hurt you or cause you pain. When you focus on something, your unconscious mind takes that as a not so much a command, but a, a wish. It takes it as, you know, like, oh, you want more of that? Okay. And then you get more of it. But it doesn't differentiate. It's not prejudiced. It doesn't, it can't tell the difference between anything. It doesn't care. It just wants to give you what it thinks you want. It's not trying to hurt you. It's just... Well, that's what you're thinking about. So here, here it is. So I didn't know that then. I didn't realize how susceptible I was to my own thoughts. But how can we not be susceptible to our own thoughts? let's face it, if someone else says something to us, some people will take it on and say, yeah, I believe that, I believe that. But when we say it to ourselves, it 
it's much easier to believe because we're saying it to ourselves. Why would we lie to ourselves when the fact is it's just thoughts? It's not necessarily true. And a lot of things that we think about are not true. You know, thing, thoughts like, I'm not good enough, I'm too ugly, no one can love me, I deserve to be unhappy, I, all, all the kind of negative stuff that maybe we say to ourselves, and I, I'm, I've got my fair share. Is that true? But we believe it though, don't we? Because we say it to ourselves. So the solution to this, or a solution, not the only one, there's lots of different solutions, but this is a solution, is instead of just letting your mind come up with stuff on its own, and the reason your mind does that is because you're incredibly creative. So if you don't actually consciously think about things your mind will just do it anyway thoughts will just come up because there's no direction your mind doesn't have the direction because it's just going to go by what you think so if it if you're thinking about for example I was thinking a lot about when's the next panic attack going to happen When's it going to happen? Where am I going to be? Will I have to go to the hospital? You know, things like that. So my mind was just, oh, okay. Let's, that, that's, that's a starting point. Let's just have more of those thoughts. That's clearly what, what he wants. And I had more of that. So those thoughts started to come up naturally. And I started to believe it. And I really took that on board. And that's how I saw myself. As this big panic attack. That was it. This big bundle of anxiety. And it was very strange because apart from obviously being unhealthy, uh, very non-useful, very damaging and unnecessary as well because had I chosen to focus on something different, then I would be affecting what I thought about. It's quite obvious, really, I guess. You know, if I want my mind to think about uh, trains, for example, or it could be anything... Uh, McDonald's, it could win whatever. If I want my brain to think about that stuff or to think about Christmas, then all I've got to do is think about Christmas. And then one thought leads to another thought, leads to another thought. And my initial thought then gets carried away. And the creation, you know, the creative mind starts bringing up sort of memories from the past and maybe ideas of something that might happen in the future and maybe this different endings to stuff that already have happened. You know, this can get carried away with all that stuff. And, and then the unconscious mind, if you continuously thinking about Christmas and that's what you're thinking about, regularly thinking about it, You, I mean, there's a chance you'll start dreaming about it as well. 
because we're affected by what we think about. And your unconscious mind will just think, oh, well, it won't think, it will just do. That's the thing, the unconscious mind doesn't think, it just gives you what it thinks you want. Oh, lots of Christmas thoughts. Let's focus on Christmas. So by taking control, you're leading the thought process in a different direction to how it was before. And this isn't, I mean, you could say this is, isn't this a distraction technique? On some level it is. If it, it's distraction if it's short term. You know, if you if you decide to think about something else, to focus on something else, in order to distract yourself, then it's a short term thing. But if you decide to think about yourself as being healthy and calm and relaxed, you start remembering times in the past when you were relaxed, calm, positive, confident. And you keep remembering more times when you are relaxed, calm, confident. And then your mind, your unconscious mind, starts to get the drift of what's happening. But not thinking about it, not judging it, not evaluating it, just giving you more of those memories of when you were confident and the feelings And then when you start imagining times in the future when you will feel calm and positive and relaxed. Thinking about times in the future, scenarios in the future where you're going to feel relaxed and calm and positive. Peaceful. Feeling healthy physically and mentally. And the more of those scenarios you come up with, the more your mind fills with that positivity and that confidence and that sense of comfort and relaxation. And the more you do this, the more often you do this, the more it will naturally occur. Which means you'll more often feel relaxed and calm just naturally because that's what you, your unconscious mind thinks that you want. You get what you think about. It affects our, our own behavior as well. I mean, so if you look at the opposite scenario, someone that really feels that everyone's out to get them and everyone, you know, their attitude, the way they behave, is going to affect the behavior, the communication of other people towards them. So they'll be getting what they actually are, are focusing on. They'll be experiencing the world as being uh, cold and, you know, dangerous. When actually, if that's all they're thinking about, that's what they're going to experience. Then when you focus on feeling relaxed, focus on previous times when you've been relaxed, and we all have... And no one, anyone that says they've never been relaxed is lying or they're just forgotten. But we can start to remember 
times in the past when you felt relaxed and calm. And for some people listening to this, maybe the most recent time will have been when you listened to me. Maybe yesterday during a relaxation session. The more often you listen to my relaxation sessions, the more relaxed you'll feel. Not just then, but when you're not listening, you'll feel more relaxed. Things change. Your mind, your unconscious mind is starting to hear this positivity, these, you know, the feelings of confidence and relaxation, the your body feeling relaxed. Your unconscious mind listens to that and says, oh, you want more of that because that's what you're doing. So you want more of it because the unconscious mind doesn't think beyond, well, why would you do it if you don't want to? If you don't want more of this, why would you do it? So it, it, it assumes that you know what's best for you and it tries to give you more of that. Which puts you in control. Consciously puts you in control of what you feel and how you feel and how your life is. And it is a bit of responsibility because I think it's good to take it in a sense of not taking it as blame. Because some people could take that as well. Oh, so you're blaming me for how I feel. No, not at all. You're not to, you're not to blame for illness. But you are responsible for your healing, for your recovery. That's your responsibility. Just like it's my responsibility. In fact, you're the only one that's responsible for that. Because if you go to meditation, yoga, you're still responsible for going there. The activities you do there may, you know, read what probably will really help you to feel more calm and relaxed more of the time. But it won't do it unless you go. So you're responsible for turning up. You're responsible for pressing the play button. Because if you don't play the, press the play button, you don't hear what I say. But when you do hear what I say, even, you know, the, what's weird about this is even if you were to disagree, it's still going in. So this isn't one of those situations where you agree or disagree. This is a factual thing. It's not an opinion. What you think about affects your life. What you focus on affects how you feel. That's factual. There is no question of that. And you know that, really. You may argue it, but you know it really. It's kind of the most obvious thing ever. Yet at the same time, maybe something that I know I haven't always put much effort into. Because I'll be honest, I've said this in the past. I've quite enjoyed being a victim at times. Not being the victim of what happened in the past, but playing the victim, you know, keep keeping hold of that. Um, basically feeling sorry for myself. And blaming what happened Maybe, you know, when I was a child on what's happening to me as an adult or my behavior. And it has had a huge effect. 
However, what has a bigger effect on how I feel now is what I focus on. It doesn't change the past, but definitely will change your future. So focus in not just on previous times when you felt relaxed, but focus in on future times when you feel relaxed and calm, comfortable and confident. And the more you focus on that, the more you fantasize and imagine the future like that. the better you will feel in the moment, but also your unconscious mind will give you that because that's what you're asking for. So those feelings of confidence, relaxation, safety will arise naturally. But technically, they're not arising naturally because you have done the work. But your unconscious mind will give you more of that. It will focus on the positive because that's what you're doing. It's basically following the leader. You are the leader. You, your your conscious mind, you are the leader. You're in charge of yourself. And I know it's a responsibility that not everybody enjoys. I don't sometimes. I, As I said a second ago, I like to be, I like to feel sorry for myself and I like to blame other people. I have done in the past. I try not to so much now. The reality is we're responsible for ourselves. So you're responsible for your own relaxation. Which is what you're doing anyway. You're taking control because you're listening to this recording and other things that you're doing in your life. Changing your lifestyle maybe. You're taking responsibility. So give yourself a pat on the back. Maybe not physically because I don't feel I could reach my back with my hand. I'm not sure. You get what you think about. You get more of what you think about most of the time. And it'd be Let's face it, the way I see it is, isn't it better to have a kind of obsession about feeling relaxed and calm than to be thinking about that, than to be thinking, have an obsession about feeling anxious and scared and wound up and tense and ill, basically. I know which I'd rather think about and spend my time focusing on. So that's kind of it. Again, it's a bit longer than I thought it was going to be. It's a very... You you get what you think about. That's it. Or maybe a better title is... If you focus on relaxation, you'll feel more relaxed. You know, there's lots of different titles which mean the same thing. You focus on feeling relaxed, you're going to feel more relaxed. But not just in the short term. This is long term. This changes your self-image. So you start to see yourself as being this calm, relaxed person. 
who can deal with whatever life throws at you or presents to you. That's probably a nicer way of saying it. You can deal with stuff. And you have done. So that's the end of this recording. It's just a a short one. I could talk more on this subject and I probably will in the future. But I didn't want it to be too long. And plus, there's a little bit of background sound at the moment, so I don't try not to make too many recordings when this the neighbours are being rowdy. Plus the pigeons. So maybe listen to this a few times. Let it sink in, some of the ideas. Let it sink in. And try to wrap your mind around the idea that this is not an opinion, it's fact. Okay? This is fact. You focus on feeling relaxed and calm, then you're going to feel more relaxed and calm. And the more you focus on it, the more you'll feel it. Focusing on previous times when you're relaxed and calm, feeling safe and confident. Focusing on future times when you are going to feel relaxed, calm, safe, confident. Then your unconscious mind gets that message. So that's what you want. You can add more of that. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. uh, Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.